Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing well. I want to start out by saying thank you to each and every one of you, whether you've been with me since the beginning or you're new to my channel. I really appreciate your presence. Out of all the channels on YouTube, you chose mine and I'm extremely grateful. I appreciate your presence. I appreciate your feedback, your shares, your likes. And of course, I appreciate you joining this community and supporting this community by subscribing to my channel. It's what inspires me to create and strive for excellence in every one of the videos that I produce. And I don't produce as many as I'd like to, but I do try to publish at least two videos a week, sometimes more, it depends on my time. But anyway, guys, I'm very excited because we're gonna learn how to make that gorgeous layered necklace set that you saw in the intro. It's a very trendy chain necklace set that can be worn together or it can be worn separately, and it's very easy to make. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to make it, and we're gonna be using the beads that came in the curated bead box for the month of May. Now, if you don't subscribe to that box, don't worry. I'll leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. If you scroll down, you'll see it. I'll also leave a link to the website in case you want to check out the created bead box it's a really great box especially if you're looking to build up your bead stash another thing i'll leave down below is a list of all the tools i'll be using today and if your time is limited and you don't want to watch the whole thing i'll leave some timestamps as well so you can skip forward to any portion of the video now if you follow my channel you know that i always model my pieces at the end of the video so stick around for that so without any further ado let's go ahead and get started and here we have created bee box for the month of May. If you haven't seen the unboxing video, I'll leave a link down below in the description section. Let's go ahead and select the beads. I'm going to be using some items from the Finding Starter Kit. More than likely, I'll use the head pins, jump rings, and lobster clasps. I want to use one of these key charms or key pendants. They're actually big enough to be a pendant. These measure 42 by 16 millimeters. And I want to use these oval glass beads. When I first saw these, I knew I had to use them. I really love that silver stripe through the bead. And by the way, they measure eight by six millimeters. I wanna use these gemstones as well. This is called terminated quartz. It's a little bit difficult to pronounce and some people pronounce it differently, but it's a combination of tourmaline and quartz, I guess. But anyway, these measure six millimeters in size and we'll probably end up using all of them. And I'm gonna use a couple of beads from this pack here. This is the designer bead mix. And as you can see, there's a variety of sizes and shapes. I'm only going to use a few of these. And that's it from this box. I'm going to be using two types of chain. This is called paperclip chain, and this is just cable chain. I believe these links measure 4 by 8 millimeters, and these measure 4 by 3 millimeters. This one actually has a lobster clasp already attached, but I'm going to remove it because it's a little bit too small. I'm going to be using this little charm on one of my necklaces. I believe it measures 18 by 11, something like that. And this one came from my own stash. You can use whatever charm or pendant you have that's small and it doesn't have to be a heart. I'm gonna be using some 22 gauge wire and this wire is by Beadsmith. The color of this wire is titanium. It's like a silver color. And it is tarnish resistant and you don't have to use this brand. You can use whatever brand you want as long as it's 22 gauge. So now that we've gone over the materials, we're gonna get started. We're gonna start by assembling the bottom necklace, which is the longest one. And you're gonna to have to decide how long you want your necklace to be. I'm not a very big person, so for me, I think 24 inches would be good, but I'm gonna decide that later on. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of beads there. I really don't want a lot of beads on the bottom necklace. And don't ask me why, it's just a design idea that I came up with. Obviously, if you wanna have more beads and less chain, you can certainly do that. It's up to you. We're gonna start by loading one of these beads on wire, and I'm gonna cut myself a piece that's relatively long, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Let me straighten it out a little bit. Now this piece is about seven inches long, something like that. And the reason I cut myself a long piece is because I'm gonna be doing the wire saving method. When I'm working by myself, I usually use a much longer piece. So what I recommend you do is work with the length that you feel comfortable with. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab the wire about an inch and a quarter down and kink it, switch to this part of the wire. And now I'm gonna take the little tail and wrap it around the nose of my pliers, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. And I'm gonna do some wraps, but before I do the wraps, I'm gonna attach it to the pendant. Let me open it up a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier.
As you can see, I've attached it and now I'm going to close it with some wraps. Let me grab the loop with these pliers. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like to use them because they have a very skinny tip and they grab really well. And now with my needle nose pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and I'm going to do a couple of wraps. And now I'm going to cut off the excess. Using my flush cutters, I'm going to come in here and snip it off. And you definitely want to tuck that little tail in. You don't want anything sharp sticking out. And now I'm going to load a bead. I'm going to grab the wire right where the bead is, line up my bottom loop, kink it, switch to this part of the wire, take the tail, wrap it around, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, and now I'm going to cut off what I don't need, and now before I do my wraps, I'm going to attach the chain. So I'm going to slide the last link into the loop that I created. Let me open it up a little bit. And now that it's in my loop, I'm going to go ahead and do some wraps. So once again, I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers. Grab the tail and do some wraps. Snip off the excess. And now I'm going to tuck in that little end. As you can see, we've attached the beta component. And now I need to figure out how long I want my chain segments to be. And I'm thinking something like 12 lengths. Let me just measure 12 lengths. 12 lengths is about an inch and a quarter. But you also have to take into account the loop of the beta components. Like I said before, you can have as many beta components as you want. You can have shorter chain segments if you want to or longer. Let me just count 12 lengths. I think I need to cut this one right here. But instead of cutting, I think I'm going to try to open it up. I believe these are open lengths. It's always a good idea to save your cutters if you can possibly do that. So now I'm going to attach another bead and I'm going to use the same piece of wire. Once again, I'm going to grab it an inch and a quarter down, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. And now I'm going to attach it to the end of the chain I'm going to slide the link into the loop I created, just like that. Grab the loop, and now grab the tail and do my wraps. And now let me cut off the excess. Tuck in that little sharp end. Thread on a bead. Grab the wire at the top of the bead like this. Line up the bottom loop. Kink it. Switch to this part. Wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers. Flip my pliers around. Continue to wrap to the back. Let me open it up so I can attach chain. I'm going to slide the link of the chain into the loop I created like this. 
grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the sharp end. And now I have two beta components attached and some chain. And that's basically how I'm going to build this necklace until I get the length that I want. I'm going to do this side first and then I'll do the other side. So let me do that off camera and I'll be right back. I'm back. As you can see, I've attached all the beads and all the chain segments. And I ended up using a total of 14 beads. So seven beads per strand. Each strand measures about 11 and a half inches. So 11 and a half times two is 23 inches. And by the time I add the jump rings and the clasp, it'll be 24 inches long. Now yours may be different depending on how big your loops are. So now to finish the necklace, we're going to attach the clasp. Here's a lobster clasp and two six millimeter jump rings. And these came in the Finding Starter Kit. Let me open up the jump ring. I'm going to attach the clasp. And now I'm going to attach it to this beaded component. Let me close up the jump ring. And now let's open up this one. And this one's going to be attached to this beaded component. So this necklace is done. Let me see if I can arrange it nicely here. It's a bit of a challenge because the beads want to roll around, but I think you get the idea. I think it looks pretty cute and it's going to look even cuter with the other two necklaces for that layered effect. So now let me get the materials for necklace number two. Here are the materials for the second necklace. I have the paper clip chain, and this piece is about 19 inches long. I also have three glass beads from the designer bead mix. They're tubular in shape, as you can see, and the bag came with quite a few of them. Hopefully, if you have the curated bead box, you'll find at least three of them. Now, this head pin is from my stash. I was originally going to use the ones that came with the Finding Starter Kit, but it turns out that they're a little bit too thick for these beads, and they actually don't fit through the holes. I believe those head pins are 19 gauge, so they're pretty thick, and this one here is 21 gauge. So if you're thinking about making this necklace, just keep that in mind. And by the way, this head pin is two inches long. I also have a lobster clasp and two six millimeter jump rings from the Finding Starter Kit. And this is going to be the easiest necklace to make out of the three. So let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to thread these beads onto the head pin. Just like that. And now using flat nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin at the top of the bead like this, kink it, snip off the excess, leaving about half an inch or so. Using my round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin like this so that it's flush. And now I'm simply going to loop it. You want to make sure that your loop is closed nicely. And you want to make sure that it's straight as well. Just like that. And now we need to find the center of this chain. So I'm going to bring my ends together. And now using a head pin, I'm going to insert the head pin through both ends. And this is the easiest way to find the center. 
and this is the center link right here. And now I'm going to open up the loop of this component. And I'm going to insert it into this loop. And close it up. I think this component looks really cute with these paper clip links. So now we just need to attach the clasp. Let me open up this jump ring now. Attach the clasp. And I'm going to attach it to this end of the necklace. And close it up. This type of chain is very trendy these days, and I can't wait to show you what it looks like with the other necklace, but we'll do that at the end when I finish the third one. So let me get the materials for that. Here are the materials for the third necklace. This necklace will be shorter than the other two. As you can see, I have the two melanated quartz beads, and I have another one of the glass oval beads with a silver stripe, and I have my pendant or my charm, and here I have a piece of wire. And I forgot to tell you what I meant by wire saving method. I used to do it a different way. I used to cut myself three inch pieces when doing wrap loops, but that ended up wasting a lot of wire. And part of the reason I did that is so that you could see exactly what I was doing. Sometimes it's easier if you're a beginner to just cut yourself single pieces. So you're gonna have to decide how you wanna do it. I just find that this method saves a little bit more wire than the other method. So the first thing we're gonna do is attach the bead to the charm and it's gonna be a wrap loop. So I'm gonna grab the wire an inch and a quarter down, just like we've been doing, kink it, Switch to this part, take the tail, wrap it around the nose of my pliers, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Let me open it up. I'm gonna attach it to the charm. Just like that. Grab the loop. Grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little sharp end. And now I'm gonna thread on the bead. I'm gonna grab the wire at the top of the bead, kink it, switch to this part Take the tail and wrap it around the nose of the pliers. Flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. And now we can go ahead and close it with wraps. So I'm gonna grab the loop with my skinny pliers. I'm gonna snip off the wire that I don't need. Grab the tail and do my wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the sharp end. Now these loops need to be facing a certain way. So I'm gonna grab this one with some pliers 
and I'm going to grab this one and turn it this way. So they're perpendicular to each other. And this is what you should have. So now we're going to build the strands with these beads here. And it's the same method, guys. It's the exact same method that I've been showing you. I'm going to grab the wire an inch and a quarter down, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip my pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Let me open it up a little bit. I'm going to attach it to the pendant. Grab the loop, grab the tail, do some wraps, throw the bead on, grab the wire right where the bead is, line up the bottom loop, kink it, switch to this part, wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around, Continue to wrap to the back. And that's the beginning of a strand. As you can see, there was very little waste of wire. So now I'm going to cut myself another piece. Always straighten it out before you cut it off the spool. Let me go ahead and attach the bead for the other strand. Open up the loop, slide it into this loop, grab it with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do my wraps. Thread another bead on. Grab the wire right where the bead is, line up the bottom loop, kink it, snip off the excess wire, and now I'm going to grab the wire here again, wrap it around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, and continue to wrap to the back. So now we have two beaded components attached. Let me do one more with you and then I'm going to do the rest off camera. Once again, I'm going to grab the wire an inch and a quarter down, kink it, switch to this part, take the tail, wrap it around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. I'm going to open it up a little bit to make it easier to insert into this component. Grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess, tuck in the sharp end, thread a bead on. Bring it down, grab the wire right where the bead is, line up the bottom loop, kink it. Now sometimes I cut the excess wire at this point, but other times I wrap the wire around the nose of my pliers first and then do it. So let me show you that way. I think it's easier this way actually. I'm going to grab the loop. And at this point, I would cut the wire. But in this case, it really wasn't necessary because I can't really use that piece anyways. But if you had a longer piece, that's what you would do. So now I'm going to grab the tail and do my wraps. So that's basically how I'm going to build the rest of the necklace. I'm going to continue to link these beads until I get just the right length. 
And by the way, you don't have to add this bead like I did. The reason I added it is because I wanted it to coordinate with the other necklace, but you can certainly just have the pendant without that bead. So anyway, guys, I'm going to keep connecting these beads the exact same way until I get the length that I need and I'll be right back. Well, here's the finished necklace and I used a total of 26 beads. It measures about 16 inches. I still had four beads left over. So if you wanted a longer length, you could definitely use up all the beads that came on the strand. But anyway, guys, I think it looks really cute. I'm glad I used this bead down here because it really makes that pendant stand out. Plus it coordinates with a longer necklace. I went ahead and attached the jump rings and clasp. Since I've already shown you how to do that, I didn't think I'd have to show you again. So I went ahead and did it off camera. So now let me bring out the other two and I'll arrange them on my board. Well, here's the entire set and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it's very trendy. I think the distribution of the beads and the variety of chain is very balanced and very attractive. I love having the gemstones at the top. Anything that's closer to your face is more visible. But I think the best thing about this set is that it's very trendy. Like I said earlier, the paperclip chain is very popular and so is the layered look. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, I'm going to go ahead and put these on and show you what it looks like. So I'll see you in a few moments. You know, I was going to model each one separately, but then I thought, no, this is a layered set and these necklaces belong together. And I really don't think it's too much because the chain is very delicate and they actually look kind of on the dainty side a little bit. But anyway, guys, I would love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear what you think about this necklace set. And like I said, you can wear them separately or you can wear them together. That's one of the nice things about making necklace sets. It gives you lots of options. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.